Hello and welcome to another episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I am doing this number 8E Ford Mustang Fastback that were first produced in 1966. It's quite a boring little model to look at. It doesn't have too many features, but one of its main features is the unusual method of steering the front wheels using a small plastic piece that is on the left hand side. This one has been painted red all over and a yellow grill. The tow hook made of red plastic is broken so I'm going to try and replace that with the spare one that I've got. Here I'm demonstrating how the wheels turn by pushing on that little plastic peg. Quite ingenious. I'm not too sure how many vehicles came out with this type of steering, but it would be interesting to know if there were others. As usual, I'm going to take the base off. On this model it's quite easy, because there's just one rivet to drill out at the back there, and the front of the base is held in place by a little tab that goes in a groove underneath the front bumper bar. So when I've worn away all that excess material on the end of the rivet post there. The base just comes off with a little bit of persuasion via the small flat bladed screwdriver. Here you can see that this piece here has been chewed or damaged beyond repair. I just so happen to have another interior here which has a perfect hook on it so I'm going to swap them over and put this one in the model when I put it back together. This just needs a bit of a clean and it will be good to go. Here I'm showing you the method of the steering. That little white piece of plastic just rolls forwards and backwards there. Very simple. Uh, there isn't even a hinge point there. Look, the axle is just loose sitting in there in that slot. Now when the body's on you can't remove this, but with the body removed you can move it all the way back and the large end comes out through that keyhole there. There's a suspension uh, piece there, that clear plastic, and I'm going to try and make that a little bit tighter. And I've got to take this windscreen out to clean it because it's a bit scuffed up and I want it to look new. So once again I use this shallow cut drill to remove the post in the roof there that's securing the windscreen in the model. I use that shallow cut drill because I don't want to go through the roof. That's always a great sense of satisfaction when you pop the windscreen out like that. So this is ready now for paint stripping. For the base I'm going to paint strip it also. I'm going to remove those burrs on the end of the axle there using this rotary tool and take the wheels off so I can paint strip the model without melting the tyres or the wheel hubs as sometimes happens. The wheel hubs on these are quite unusual actually. They are plastic but they're kind of like chrome plated. I'm not too sure how they do that in the factory but they are genuinely plastic but they look like they're solid metal. So that's them out. Um, the tyres are quite solid tyres on this model. They're not rubbery like normal. And I'm having to immerse them in some hot water so I can get the tyres off. One of them came off but these other three were too tight to remove by finger pressure alone until I heated them up. I'm going to have to clean that tyre and those hubcaps because, as you can see, one of them's got red paint on it. Here's that suspension strap, I suppose you could call it. It's a bit of a seesaw. It should sit flat, ideally, so that it functions when you push down on the model to give the illusion of spring suspension. I'm trying something new here, a bit risky. I'm just heating up the plastic very gently with this little blowtorch and pushing it down with my finger and thumb. 
and I'm hoping when it cools it will remain in that position. I think it's a little bit better, although I must say I was hoping for something a little bit better than that. Here I'm trying something different. I figure if I lift it up slightly, then heat it and push it down, I'm hoping it should bend a little bit more this time round and function as it did when it was new. So I light the gas up again and give it another little heat there. I don't want to go too crazy because it would probably melt it in a half a second if I held it there for too long. There, that seems to have done the job. So maybe not as new, but slightly better than what it was. Here I've put in the axle just to sort of demonstrate how it works. It definitely does seem to work better than it did before. Oh, here's Kevin. He's uh, always pestering me these days, trying to get my attention for some reason. I think he might be a little bit jealous of my new mascot, Marty the Doll. Right, using this uh, poly stripper, paint stripper, I am now commencing the stripping of the paint. And I'm being very, very careful that I don't get any on that plastic block because I fear it would probably turn it into jelly. I don't really want to have to remove it if I don't have to because being plastic, it would be difficult to reform the rivet that's holding it into position and uh, I'm really trying to just minimize the amount of work I'm doing so I can get this thing done and dusted and uploaded to the internet. So the paint stripper softens the paint quite quickly and now using this toothbrush it's a simple case of just scrubbing off the old paint and rinsing the brush and the model in the water there. Sometimes you might have to apply a second amount of paint stripper. In this instance I didn't, although there are a couple of little bits left behind there that I'm going to scrape off with a wire brush in a minute. Same there. 90% of it came off, 95% even. Now I'm just shining up the metal here with this little brass brush in my drill. I think I need a new one. There we go. That's a little bit better, that one. It's beyond its use-by date, that other one. I've chucked it away. So I'm doing the inside as well as the outside. Because when you paint these models, you've got to paint the inside because they got clear glass in them and uh, this one's actually got a couple of open windows. It's nice to look inside and see the interior has been painted as well. Here I'm using a little bit of bronze wool. It's a little bit softer than the steel wool that I used to use and uh, it does a great job of shining up the metal and preparing it for the undercoat. The base is a little bit tricky because of all those letters that are cast in it but I get there in the end. This is what it looks like after I've undercoated it with the white primer. I'm using white today instead of the light gray. And this was actually a mistake because when I come to paint it, I cannot tell where I've painted and where I haven't. Because the white paint blends in with the white primer. So there's a little tip for you. Don't use the white primer if you're painting something white. I'm using this handy little battery powered paint mixer there and now I'm cleaning it out in some thinners. 
Look at that. That's impressive, isn't it? That's like a thousand frames a minute there. Oh, I've just run some thinners through the brush. And it's only now that I realise, ooh, I can't really see where I've gone and where I haven't gone. So I just basically give it a nice thick coat all over. And afterwards I wish I hadn't. And you'll see why. So that's the body painted. I'll just sit that up there on this magnetic clamp to dry. And I go out to my shed and I paint the base with the gloss black out of this aerosol can, which is so convenient. I don't know why I don't do it more often. Turned out quite good too. So here is the front of the vehicle. You can see that the headlights have actually been filled in with the white paint because I went a little bit crazy and I'm not very pleased about it but I've come to the realization that I'm going to have to strip this model back and try again only this time I'm going to be using the gray primer and I'm not going to put the paint on as thick so here we go take two and I've washed it with some soap and water also to degrease it and here is the light grey surface primer that I'm going to use it's one of my popular products I use it quite a lot on these little cars you've probably seen me using it before that's better I do like that that light grey primer is an excellent thing now this was a little bit annoying see that plastic suspension unit the black paint i used has destroyed it basically i'm pretty much gutted when i saw that i'm gonna have to kind of fix it somehow i have no idea how still that's enough for one day so i go off to bed and i'll leave this to dry and i'll fix it up in the morning Right, I've had my breakfast, uh, now it's time to get back into it. Oh, what the heck's happened here? What? What's going on? What, who's... What the heck's happened to... Th what? I'm happy with that. So, I have to strip it a third time. Here's the base, I've removed the ruined suspension part there and I'm going to have a bash at making one out of this 0.75mm thick polystyrene sheet. Okay, so I've cut two of these rectangles out. Um, I was just going to go over the one, but it didn't seem rigid enough, so I'm going to glue two of them together and make like a laminated leaf spring, I guess you could call it. And I glue them together with some polystyrene glue, the type that you make models with, airfix models, etc. And my plan is to warp them slightly. As, as the glue is drying, I'm going to warp them slightly to impart a curve on the, the two pieces. Like the top one's going to be stretched a little bit longer than the bottom one. And I'm hoping that by bending them and holding them to glue, it's going to adopt that curve. Just holding it whilst it dries. It dries pretty quick, that stuff. And there we go. Look at that. That's my new suspension block. A leaf spring, if you will. Just got to drill a hole in the middle of it and pop it back on there. And I think it will do the job. 
No one will know, of course, because it's hidden on the inside of the model. So to mark where I've got to drill it, I just put a little silver paint on the post there. And when I flip it over, now I can see where I've got to drill. I drill it slightly undersized, and I actually hammered a washer over that post, and that forced that plastic sheet down over it, locked it into position. And I'm just showing you here that it got fairly firm with down pressure there. It's pushing down. It's actually better than the original. Now there is one little hiccup and that is that this plastic piece that controls the steering wheel originally travelled underneath a T-piece at the end where my thumb is there. So I'm going to make a little overhanging piece to trap that lever into position there. It's a bit fiddly. It's my own fault really for using that black paint, being lazy and using a can of spray paint has given me all this extra work. Isn't that always the way? You try to take shortcuts and you end up taking more time than if you did it properly the first time round. So that works quite well. That glued up really good and it's solid. And it's going to hold that in position. Now this red paint on the windscreen here, I'm having a bash with some brake fluid, it's worked before. So I'm trying it again. And in this instance, it doesn't work. Depending on what sort of paint you, you're trying to get off. Things don't always go as planned. So I tried something different, I thought I'd try some metal polish. I normally polish the transparencies with this metal polish and I thought well hey I might as well just start and hopefully it will polish off the red paint as I'm going and it did it took longer than normal but I got it off in the end and it's still got some minor scuffing on it even after my best efforts with the metal polish so I'm going to give it a dunk in the self-shining floor polish and that normally fixes it up. That's all it needs, one dunk, shake off any excess and I'm in the habit of putting it in this little onion saver because I used to use all sorts of things and but I bought this specifically for this job and it stays in my hobby room and it's an onion free zone. So this is a couple of hours later, it's dried, a piece of paper stuck to the bottom of it but that just pulls off easily. And here you can see it's really made a difference. It kind of adds a beautiful shiny gloss finish and makes the glass look 10 times better than just polishing it alone. Now I've got to clean that uh, tyre to get the paint off that and these hubcaps as well. I'm going to use a little bit of metal polish. Hopefully it's not too harsh. They didn't really come up super shiny, but I was able to get rid of this uh, red paint. Here I've got like a tiny nail stuck in a block of wood. I've used it before for doing things like this. It's a great aid because you don't have to hold the wheel down. It just stays in position whilst you're working on it. The tyres, I gave them a quick coat of that black spray paint again and praying they don't melt and they didn't now back out to the shed i'm reassembling the wheels putting them back on the base there using that hollowed out nail one in the top and one in the bottom and just grinding that end turning it into a mushroomed end and here look at this 
that looks better than new. I've just got to glue this cleaned windscreen back in now using a tiny little blob of clear silicon. I used to use uh, Araldite and then somebody pointed out that if I used silicon in the future I could just remove the windscreen if necessary to clean it again and it wouldn't get broken trying to force it out as it would if you glued it in with epoxy resin. All right, here's the replacement interior that I sourced from another broken vehicle and I've given it a clean in some warm soapy water and that fits over that post lovely holds itself in there's that tab I was talking about at the beginning that goes into that little slot in the front and then the back swings down a post protrudes through the hole and I've tapped a thread in that post and I put this little button screw in there to hold it all back together again right now check out that rear suspension wow now incidentally this little car was used on the collector's mini case you can see out of all the cars they made they picked this one to go on the front of that case now i've read online that these came out with a silver grill sometimes sometimes they didn't so i just thought i'd put a little bit of detail on the front there so that it's similar to the original model and not over the top. I mean, I would love to go the whole hog and paint the rear lights and everything else that's silver with chrome trim, but um, I'm just trying to keep it as it looked when it first came out the factory. That's my goal. There's a couple of little bits of dust on there, you can see. They're not actually um, imperfections in the paint. It's just that I didn't see them when I put it on the carousel until after I'd filmed this shot. Here's some close-up photographs. I'm using my new camera today. Testing it out. Nice clean rear end there. Looks just like a new model. Simple and extremely good looking car. And I do love the addition of the steering, being able to steer the front wheels. It's a great idea. It just made it have a little bit more playability about it. So here I am giving it the once over and I'm very happy with how it's turned out. Oh. You've got to be kidding me. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Thanks for watching. Bye. Look what's happened to the suspension block. It is f***ed. That's not going on too good. It's splattering. Ah! This is turning into a f nightmare. This is the 20th time I've painted this f***ing thing. Now I've got to strip that shit off. Oh my god, you're so shit at acting. <laughs>